This back to school season, let HelloFresh handle dinner. Their quick and easy meals take the stress out of mealtime, even on hectic weeknights. Get 65% off plus free shipping with code MLM65 at hellofresh.com slash MLM65. So before we get started in today's episode, I wanna let you know that there has been a common scam recently where people will recreate pages to impersonate YouTubers and message their audience asking for personal information and pretending that you've won something from them. Just so you know, I'm never going to directly message fans like this. So if you receive this, please ignore it. It's a scam, do not fall for it. I'm letting you know now. So ta-da, let's get into today's episode. Almost exactly 13 years ago, in October, 2009, the country watched in horror as a balloon floated 10,000 feet in the air. And no, I don't mean a birthday balloon or even a hot air balloon, but a homemade flying saucer. Inside the saucer, the news reported, a six-year-old boy was trapped inside and quite possibly fighting for his life. The news reports were honestly pretty grim. For over an hour, MSNBC streamed footage of this balloon soaring across the Colorado skies. There was no question of if a child was trapped on board. People genuinely believed that this was the case and newscasters didn't argue otherwise. After all, why would someone lie about something like this, right? Looking back on this coverage, it's really understandable why anyone would be sitting at the edge of their seats, biting their nails and pleading that this poor child land safely. If the winds were strong enough, he could be blown into the mountains. At high enough altitudes, he might struggle to breathe. It looked like there was the possibility of aircraft interference. Basically anything that could go wrong here did go wrong. It's not as if anyone knew what to do either. As reporters reiterated time and time again, there was no book written for what to do in this situation. Military helicopters and the FAA rushed to help, supposedly intent on grabbing the tethers still attached to the balloon. If they could just get close enough, perhaps they could pull the balloon and the boy trapped inside into safety. As the minutes ticked by, the situation only became more dire. Helium leaked from the balloon, making it descend. Thankfully, the descent couldn't have actually gone better. There were no power lines nearby and the homemade UFO basically skidded to a halt in a dirt field far from roads and civilians. It was finally the end of a horrific traumatic event, except it wasn't. You see, there was no boy inside this homemade UFO. Falcon Heaney, the boy in the balloon had been hiding from his parents all along. The helicopters, the panic, the worried reporters, the concern from the community, all of it hadn't been needed. It was a slap in the face, but mistakes happen, right? Who hasn't accidentally released a UFO in their backyard and misplaced their child, right? Well, not exactly. And people wanted answers and understandably so. Kids run away and get into things, sure. But a hot air balloon that floated thousands of feet into the sky, how does that happen? Where were the parents, Richard and Mayumi? Were they simply not paying any attention? The interviews began rolling in, trying to determine if this was all due to sheer negligence or an honest mistake. An early interview with CNN became especially noteworthy. You see, Richard asked Falcon why he wouldn't answer them if he heard his parents screaming out his name. And Falcon's response changed everything. You guys said that um, we did this for the show. In an instant, everything changed. The country went from being terrified for this poor family to relieved that this little boy was okay, to furious at the lie. It was a roller coaster of emotions that ended in blaming the parents for this whole ordeal. I mean, who the fuck just does this to get on television? People have done despicable things for entertainment's sake before, but this was a new level. The Heaney family had done something unprecedented. So it seemed that unprecedented anger was also justified. The following day, the New York Times reported on the story, commenting on Richard's reaction to his son supposedly drifting off into the Colorado atmosphere. The first line of the story read, before the fame seeking backyard scientist, Richard Heaney phoned the police to report that his six-year-old son Falcon had floated away on a homemade flying saucer Thursday morning, he called a local TV station and asked them to send a news helicopter. And that just really seemed to put things into perspective and sink whatever Richard had left of his reputation. Just three days after the incident, authorities announced that the whole entire thing was staged. Sheriff Jim Alderton of Larimer County said that they should have searched the house more thoroughly, but it was Falcon and his brother's verbal and nonverbal cues that tipped him off to the hoax. Richard and Mayumi were sold out by their own kids and people were all too happy to turn Falcon into a meme and shame the family for their lie. But was this unbridled anger and disappointment actually deserved? As it turns out, maybe not. Emotions around the event were a roller coaster, but so is the so-called hoax itself. One moment, it definitely happened for attention. The next, it seemed like Richard Heaney is the only one telling the truth in the entire situation. 
Revelations have continued to crop up over the years with one journalist writing that they solved the mystery an entire decade later. But before we can answer the question about the deserved rage, we have to answer a different question. Who the hell would make a homemade UFO in the first place? Hello and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays. I'm the Illuminati and today I wanted to dig into the Balloon Boy hoax. Now, since I live in Colorado, I find this case as well as all of its twists and turns particularly interesting. Of course, to understand what happened here, we do need to dig a bit deeper than just the hoax itself and actually meet the Heaney family. Luckily for us, once the incident took place, there was no shortage of information being shared about Richard and Mayumi. The first strike against them, so to speak, was that the couple were actors who met back when they were taking classes in Hollywood. Perhaps they were confident enough in their ability to pull off this massive lie. That sure seemed to be Alderton's theory, as he said the couple, quote, put on a very good show for us. Richard and Mayumi did have some TV success as well, as the couple appeared on the television show, Wife Swap. They were a pretty wacky family on the show, mostly due to Richard appearing as an eccentric storm chaser, dragging his family along for the ride. His unique personality did come across as pretty strange at times. According to CBS, Richard claims that he once passed out in a fast food restaurant and heard aliens speak to him. He also continually mentioned wanting to create a flying saucer, not unlike the one used in the hoax and send it into a tornado. In one episode, he actually brought a hovercraft-like device onto a hockey rink to pull his children around and brought his kids on UFO hunting expeditions. Not only that, but the family fired off rockets, predicted the end of days, and shoveled sidewalks by using a blowtorch. They did so well that Richard seemed determined to get his own reality TV show too. After all, the family was certainly fun to watch, so why not? Well, this is where that whole, we did it for the show comment from Falcon comes in. Many believe that the entire reason for the Balloon Boy hoax was to get Richard publicity, to keep his family's name on screens. But would this kooky dad of three really stoop this low? And look, I'm not going to say that Richard is a bad guy for being interested in aliens. Like you do you if that's your special interest. However, he didn't just come across as some eccentric guy on television either. Sometimes he came across as someone willing to put their kids in the line of fire, someone dangerous, not only to his kids, but to his wife too. Shortly after the supposed hoax, news outlets like ABC began speculating that he was actually abusing his wife. They wrote that, Like any good supporting actress, Mayumi Heaney seems to be doing everything to back up her husband, even to her own detriment. ABC interviewed his former business partner, Barbara Slusser, who said that Mayumi's quote, Japanese background has kept her in a subservient relationship. She's a highly intelligent woman, a lovely soul. Man, she's gotten herself into a situation with Richard and the kids, Slusser said. Whatever he says goes, she's basically his slave. Mayumi could barely speak English when she moved from Japan to the US to pursue acting, escaping her abusive father in the process. ABC and Slusser implied that she'd only jumped from one bad relationship to another, while a former family friend, Scott Stevens, accused Richard of being painfully aware of this. He believed that Asian women can be subservient and that's what he wanted, Stevens said. This dynamic was only cemented by an alleged domestic violence report and the moment Richard screamed, you're a man's nightmare. I'm glad my wife was born in Japan to Karen, a woman that swapped places with Mayumi on wife swap. Basically, the evidence that Richard was a poor and even racist husband was mounting. The public assumed that, hey, if this guy is displaying all this concerning behavior and taking his kids along for reckless storm chasing, then he sounds more than capable of lying to people for his own misguided self-interests. Everyone and anyone came out with their negative encounters with the Heaney family. Cavalier, a photographer that took photos of Richard for his acting auditions, claimed that she allowed the Heaney family to live in her rental property back in 2006. She claimed the rent was often late, they never paid the security deposit, and when she had no choice but to evict them, Richard blocked her from entering and yelled profanities at her while Mayumi filmed the whole thing. At the same time of the Balloon Boy hoax, Cavalier said the Heaney's owed her $6,000 for damage to her home. Worse yet, a supposed co-conspirator stepped forward. Robert Thomas, a self-described researcher from Denver, told Gawker.com that Richard Heaney had been planning a hoax all along to try and get his own reality show. Thomas claimed that the show was meant to have Heaney acting as a mad scientist type of character. As for the proposal, well, Thomas alleged Richard had a pretty unique idea for their marketing, and I quote, 
This will be the most significant UFO related news event to take place since the Roswell crash of 1947. And the result will be a dramatic increase in local and national awareness about the Heaney family, our reality series, as well as the UFO phenomenon in general. And that's a pretty damning yikes on trikes for me. Richard did not come across well in the media to put it mildly, but there wasn't yet a nail in the coffin. A renter's complaints, emails from Robert Thomas, and a six-year-old's exhausted claim that they did it for the show. That wouldn't be enough to prove that there'd actually truly been a crime. That is, until Mayumi confessed. Not long after the investigation opened, Mayumi admitted that the entire incident had been a lie. Though you might think that this makes the entire situation an open and shut case, her confession wasn't quite this simple. Legal experts theorize that Mayumi did this to avoid her children being taken away or to spare them from having to testify against Richard. There's other factors here too. English isn't Mayumi's first language. The whole of law enforcement and the media were turned against them and she feared deportation. So who would want to fight that? Nonetheless, a confession is a confession. Both Richard and Mayumi got jail time with Richard receiving 90 days and Mayumi receiving 20. Other consequences like stipulations that they couldn't profit from the event, community service hours, and a fine of $36,000 were also imposed. After all that time and money they wasted, it only seemed fair that they pay the price. Yet it was Richard's required apology that seemed to garner the most attention. The entire time he says, sorry, he looks like he's being forced, like he's resentful. Maybe it's because he's bitter he got caught, or maybe it's because he was infuriated he had to apologize for nothing. For years, the balloon boy hoax sort of faded from the public eye. Richard continued to stick to his story and insist that he'd only pled guilty to keep his wife from being deported. But aside from his insistence, this was solved. It was a laughable, ridiculous, one of a kind hoax that would forever live on in infamy on the internet. It only seems fitting that it was the internet too that revived the case. Almost eight years after the supposed hoax, the internet historian released an episode called Balloon Boy, The Untold Story. This video argues that the entire case was never a hoax to begin with, and the Heaney family had genuinely believed that Falcon was up there in the balloon. There's several pieces of evidence that back up this claim, namely the launch footage shown about four minutes into the video. In it, not only is Richard outraged when the homemade UFO floats off, but even Falcon's brother seems frantic, telling his parents that he saw Falcon crawl inside. Yes, the parents are actors, but can anyone really act this well, especially a child? I mean, I assume it is possible, but I have to admit the footage does seem pretty compelling. If Richard had intended on losing this balloon all along, why create such an elaborate structure for it? Why bother with a high voltage sign on the balloon? And is it possible that they got this absolutely perfect on the very first try? Things don't fully add up here. And when you look at the case against the Heenies, it doesn't exactly get much better. The New York Times got it wrong when they opened their March 16th, 2009 article by stating that Richard called a local TV station before calling the police. Richard actually called the FAA first, hoping that they could track the balloon as they understood air traffic better. Then he called 911, was put on hold several times and ended up calling the local news to try and bring attention to the story. Honestly, I can't blame him for this. I'd be pretty on edge too if I wasn't getting answers in this scenario, though I also couldn't blame 911 either. It's a pretty unique situation after all. The internet historian remarks that it's also odd that Richard has a ton of helium tanks lying around. Four are seen within the launch video and it's just to lift the balloon. It seems like it's a bit excessive, so surely this demonstrates that Richard was using the contraption for experiments and not hoaxes. This is actually one point that I don't agree with, as a couple years after the video was released, it was reported that the balloon needed five tanks of helium to expand. Therefore, four tanks wouldn't be an excess. Instead, it seemed like there may just have been one that was out of frame. Still, the overall point remains the same. This was an extremely expensive and elaborate ruse, if that's what Richard intended it to be. As for the six-year-old's confession, the internet historian plays a clip in which an older Falcon explains that he was confused at the time of his initial interview. See, throughout the entire ordeal, he'd been in the attic above the garage. A reporter had asked Falcon to show him how he got up there for his TV show. When Falcon was questioned about what happened and he said, I did it for the show. He was referring to showing a reporter his hiding spot, not faking the entire incident for television. No, it's not the best excuse as the internet historian concedes, but it's hardly enough to make a case for severe fraud. So let's add up everything we've got. The police questioned the children, went through their computers and found nothing. Mayumi confessed that the balloon was made recently and specifically for the hoax, 
But Cherie from WifeSwap said that there was one point where I had to hold the spaceship and clean it and carry it, and, and Falcon ran into the spaceship and hid in there. While the reckless nature of the incident did seem like something Richard would do, Cherie claimed that he would never go so far as to lie about his son being in danger. He had a limit. It was the word of Richard against the word of Alderton in the end. The word of a UFO loving father that sent his son into tornadoes versus the word of a corrupt sheriff that misused taxpayer money and was up for reelection. And as predictable as the US justice system is, the latter party won out. But even after their time was served and the internet historian's video was released, this story still didn't die. And the legend of the balloon boy was revived yet again in 2019, this time with a new twist, another confession. And before we get into that new confession and what I think the overall truth of this whole hoax situation is, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Now, all of us love shopping online, and even if we don't love it, we pretty much all have to do it at this point. So when it comes time to check out and you see that little promo code field and you may not have a coupon, you might be thinking, well, what if I did? Well, that's where Honey comes in. Because imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites, and when you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click apply coupons, wait a few seconds, and Honey searches for all the coupons that it can find. And if it finds a working one, you'll watch the prices drop. I recently went to go buy a new pair of gym shoes and Honey found me a 10% off coupon, which I'm very, very excited for. Now, I'm not excited to have to break in these shoes and get blisters all over my feet for a little bit, but I am very excited that I saved 10% on a new pair of shoes. And Honey doesn't just work on desktop either. It works on your iPhone too. All you have to do is activate it on Safari and you can save on the go. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be just straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. And I'd never recommend something that I don't use. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash MLM. Again, that's joinhoney.com slash MLM. Are you feeling a little anxious or maybe overwhelmed? Those feelings can make it hard to shift gears and get in the mood. Well, with Dipsy, you can focus on just what makes you feel good. Dipsy is the app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and characters, no matter who you are into or what turns you on. New content is released every single week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can find something new to explore. And Dipsy also has sleep stories, wellness sessions, and now they even offer written stories. It's your new go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, or heat things up with a partner. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash MLM. Again, that's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipseastories.com slash MLM, dipsystories.com slash MLM. Robert Sanchez from 5280 spoke with the Heaney family in 2019, about a full decade after the Balloon Boy event. At first, the story he told is the one you're all familiar with. The balloon took off accidentally, Richard is a bit crass, and the family continues to deny that the events of October 2009 were a hoax. In the article, Sanchez describes the impact the reports had on the Heaney family, talking about how they had to move out of Colorado and how the ordeal cost Richard too many jobs and friends to ever return. It's hard not to feel bad for them when you read this, especially now with the seeds of doubt sown that this treatment was ever deserved. Overall though, the brothers started a metal band and even if they may not be appearing on television anytime soon, the Heenies seem happy. All's well that ends well. That is until Sanchez received an email from Mayumi's attorney. With client approval, the lawyer gave him handwritten notes, a record of the incident in Mayumi's own words. It was a blow by blow of the event, according to Sanchez, with every first entry dated all the way back to April, 2009, when their reality show was rejected. In September, Mayumi wrote about Richard redesigning the saucer. And then on October 14th, she claimed that he asked her about the possibility of having Falcon hide in their basement closet while the balloon took off. And that's right, the day before the hoax, Richard wanted to discuss Lawn Chair Larry, the story of a man that made his own homemade aircraft out of a lawn chair and balloons. Larry was the original story of Pixar's Up, you might say. The scenario Sanchez posed is an interesting one. This was a hoax within a hoax. Judging by the notes, Richard did want to fool the public while Falcon hid in the basement. He'd call the FAA, inform them of the situation, explain it was an accident, and then find his son before things got too out of hand. The publicity would be incredible, but controlled. However, Falcon didn't hide in the basement, remember? He was in the attic above the garage. So when Richard couldn't find him, his panic was real. Since Falcon didn't hide where he was meant to, the worry and reunion looked genuine. 
Richard and Mayumi didn't know where their son was. Let's explore this possibility for a moment because at face value, it does seem like a compelling argument too. Richard would get the publicity he wanted. He didn't have to be that good of an actor in the situation and no one is actually sent up in a balloon. So Sanchez asked Richard, were these notes legitimate? Was this whole thing intended to be a lie that spiraled out of control? As you'd expect, Richard was upset and eventually called Sanchez to insist that no, this didn't happen. Instead, Mayumi wrote the notes to save herself just in case. It was a backup plan, an escape. Perhaps she was so afraid of deportation after that experience that she wanted this as a safety net in case they were questioned yet again. But here's my issue with this excuse too. For one, if Mayumi wrote this as a ruse, why would she allow Sanchez to look at it? Why let him believe it's real and potentially get herself into trouble with her husband? That doesn't seem to make sense to me. With speculation sparked anew, more people began talking about the hoax on its 10 year anniversary. The following year, it was brought up again, but this time for a new reason. Richard and Mayumi were pardoned. That's right, the justice system admitted their prosecution was flawed and without having to admit any wrongdoing, of course, the Heaney family was completely pardoned. Governor Polis stated, Richard and Mayumi have paid the price in the eyes of the public, served their sentences, and it's time for all of us to move on. And that's that. Whether or not you actually believe they did anything wrong, Richard and Mayumi have had their names cleared. And do they deserve it? Well, the fact is that abiding by the ideal, innocent until proven guilty is important. In this case, I truly don't know if there was really enough evidence to warrant charging them. A six-year-old sleep deprived thoughts during an interview and the confession of someone being threatened with deportation just doesn't cut it for me. Therefore, I don't think that Richard and Mayumi should have been punished for this crime, but I do think that they should have been punished. Bringing your children into a storm, chasing tornadoes with them, that has to be some form of child endangerment. If you wanna risk your own life looking at tornadoes, that's on you, but a little kid isn't gonna know any better. A six-year-old might think it's cool or follow along because, oh, dad's doing it, but it's still extremely risky behavior. Putting that up on television and calling it kooky absolutely rubs me the wrong way. I'm about to surprise myself by saying it, but honestly, one of the people I agree with most here is Cherie Silver. Her summation of events is pretty accurate when she's asked about Richard's recklessness. And here's what she says. There's a lot of definitions of what a loving father is. And so I personally don't think a father that loves his kids should be taking them into tornadoes. But then again, you know, maybe I'm too protective over my kids. I did address that with him at one point. I said, Richard, why don't you just do the tornadoes? Why do you have to do the tornadoes? And his quote back to me was, well, Sheree, I want them to witness everything. What if something happens and they don't get to see it? And I said, yeah, what happens if you blow up and die and they get to witness that too? He absolutely is fearless and he's raising the children to be fearless. And I think this is an example of a very important lesson that sometimes you have to be careful and you have to be protective and you have to know where your kids are. It's all part of being a parent. At the end of the day, I'm not sure if this was intended as a hoax from the start, a hoax that became a genuine mistake or just an accident. But regardless of the truth, I think the outcome was a lesson that Richard needed to learn. So with all of that being said, that is where I'm going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing so that you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. If you want to connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure to click into the description box and go ahead and click the Linktree link. It's gonna have all of my social media plus all projects that I'm currently involved in. I also wanna give a big thank you to all of my patrons over at patreon.com slash Illuminati. You guys are all amazing. I love chatting with all of you. I love talking about sunburns apparently. And and you guys are just overall one of the loveliest bunches of folks I've had the opportunity to chat with. So thank you all so much for tuning into today's episode. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.